Hello, everyone. Just going to be waiting for a bit for people to filter in for about a minute or two, and we will begin. What's up? Going to get started momentarily. What's up? Mohit, Arez, Alex, Troy, Danny, Danish, Marcos, Dulce. Dulce? I, I have no clue. I suck at uh, names. So we're going to get started here in about uh, a minute or two. And yeah, today is not one of the regular uh, design reviews. Today's a project follow along. What's up? We got 80 people already. Nice. I put more marketing effort in today's live stream. I uh, sent out 70,000 emails yesterday and mentioned it on my social media, which I don't usually do, which I should. All right. Okay, so South Africa. I bet the uh, weather is a lot better here, there than here, that's for sure. It's like 38 degrees here Fahrenheit. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first, before we begin at all, today's live stream is made possible, I'm gonna move this over for a second, by Skillshare.com. All right, they're my sponsor, and this is an online education or learning platform uh, with over 25,000 classes in a variety of different relevant areas, UI, UX design, tons of classes in that specific topic that I think that, you know, that's the main focus of this channel. Um, you can learn so much about design fundamentals as it pertains to UI and also user experience design. Also graphic design, web development, a bunch of JavaScript courses here. And you can get the first two months 100% free using the link that's over here that's showing up on top of my video and also it's linked here in the YouTube description. So definitely join up because you get that two months free and it definitely supports the channel and it, it enables me to do this every Friday. All right, so check them out. And today's live stream is not gonna be a design review, although I will be handling design reviews if for those of you who do super chats at the end of the stream, but I'll mention that in a second. Uh, but what today's live stream all is all about, it's a project follow along uh, where I just create this project from scratch and this is an Adobe XD prototype. So let me hit play. Initially this comes in and then we have this scroll icon animating indefinitely. I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. Then, unfortunately, because Adobe XD doesn't yet have scroll activated auto animate, we're just going to click this and we're going to do a parallax effect. All of this stuff we're going to do today within an hour. And also, notice I uh, this is it's heavy with photographs, right? Different layers. This back here, this part, n n these rocks, and this uh, wine glass. We're going to be taking. We're going to be working in Adobe Photoshop first to take these raw photograph assets and composite them, and then export them as images as as needed to, in order to create that effect. So let's hit play again. So first, it comes down. All right, we have this scroll icon. We have a parallax sort of effect occurring in through several different uh, scenes essentially. And we're gonna do this all in Adobe XD and with the help initially of Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be leaving the, um, the chat window up here. And so I'll just put it right over here. All right. And also if you're wondering, uh, can this actually be made a reality like on a phone or in the browser? Yes, it can, although we're not going to be covering that. Um, but 
what would be a popular choice uh, for in, for making this a reality in the browser would be GSAP, which is the GreenSock animation platform, and along with the help of Scroll Magic. Um, and I have uh, several tutorials on my channel that would show you how to do this sort of thing I, I, for scroll activated parallax, I, which is very cool. So definitely check that out if you're interested in actually making this a reality on a phone or a browser. So let's get started. I'm going to close this out and I'm going to close that out over there. And like I said, we're going to get started here in Photoshop. So uh, if you look at the YouTube description, I uh, expand it so you can see the whole description. You'll see four different links. I uh, and that is links to assets, the image assets that we're going to use. Download those and they're all right here. There's only four of them. I uh, these canola fields and this landscape and the champagne and this right here. So definitely check that out. And we're going to get started. I uh, actually first we're going to get started in XD to set up the canvas so we're going to choose just the iphone x slash xs uh, artboard there okay so the reason we started with that is because i wanted to get the width and the height dimension so that we can translate that to adobe photoshop first so let me get this up there a bit Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, if you do want me to do a design review after we're done with this project, you have to send a super chat, which you come over here to the chat box, click the money icon, super chat, put in your uh, your Discord username and then a certain amount and hit buy and send. And so Discord is the free chat application, by the way, where you can go, uh, where's my Discord server? There you go. Uh, the Discord link is in the YouTube description. Join up, go to review submissions, and then... I, you can enter your design uh, or your portfolio for me to live critique uh, live on the stream before the stream ends today. And then just mention your URL or your picture, uh, like if it's like a logo design. You can send any type of design and I will critique it for you, as will the, uh, the, the chat. I asked uh, people to critique it as well on a scale of 1 to 10. All right, so enough of that. Let's get started. So it's 375 by 812. 375 by 812. Let's see if I can remember that. Create new here in Photoshop. So 375 width by 812 height. Now it's a little small, so we're going to scale this up by going to image, image size, and then we're going to take, make sure this is on this little link here. We're going to scale that up to around 800. So the height comes now to 1700. And that'll just give us a uh, more of like a, a higher quality images to work with. Okay, so the very first image that we're going to use to create this effect is uh, this one right here, the landscape tree nature grass. So just you'll see the, the 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 name of the file in the URL there in YouTube. So we're going to drag this over, and I'm going to hold Shift and Alt and scale this up, probably to right around here. All right, we're going to select Move Tool, hit Place. And in order to create this effect and make it look decent, I, you, you have to kind of look at it as a, at a certain perspective. And, and I, we're going to have to make adjustments to this image. But we're going to do that after we get everything together and placed in. So we're going to get all three or four of those images just placed in the canvas. So again, go to those links, download the images, right click, download after going them and put them in a folder somewhere and then just follow what I'm doing. Um, next, we're gonna have this canola fields graphic right here. And again, we're gonna have to do editing to make sure that this is uh, all working together. So we'll place that. And next we will have rocks. And you may be wondering, why would you put rocks there? But I just wanted to have three separate layers. And the rocks, they, they, they do work, in my opinion. So sh we're going to just scale this up right around there and just put those at the bottom. And, of course, everything looks looks like crap right now, but we will definitely fix that. And this one, actually, I'm going to rotate it too. Maybe just slightly. This one actually came as just a transparent PNG, so we don't have to edit that part. So now our goal is to get these uh, all working together. In this middle canola fields graphic right here, we need to get rid of the background here. So there's several tools and different methods that you can use in Photoshop to get rid of certain parts of backgrounds. But me, I personally just like using the pen tool with the path mode. 
And because I'm, I, you can also use, for instance, like the magnetic lasso tool. I, I like the results of just going to the pen tool and being really quick and fast about this. And I'm not really too worried about it being perfect. I know there's different selection methods that I, I probably are probably new because I haven't used Photoshop in quite a while. But I'm just going through this pretty fast just to get the rocks. I'll put uh, space and then left click and drag. All right. Almost done. So this really, if you're, if you're not familiar with the pen tool, this might take a little bit more time for you. Some are Bezier curves, it's clicking and dragging. There we go, that's it. So now I'm going to come up, up and all the way around, right click, make selection, and then hit okay. For some reason, my Photoshop inverts the selection, so I hit Control Shift and I. And now we just get that part. And before we can actually hit delete, we have to go to our layers. So go to window layers and then right click on this and just rasterize the layer and then hit delete. There we go. So now we have our three different layers here, but they don't look correct, right? So there's something off about them. And that, and that is the color. Uh, if we want this effect to work well, we're gonna have to adjust this landscape back here. All right. so. What we'll do is, sorry, I, I, I want the YouTube comments up here, but there's so many panels up, that are a part of Photoshop, it's making it a little bit difficult. Um, let's move this over. So we have our adjustments up here. So if you go to window, you can go to the adjustments to get this tab up here or this panel. And we're gonna make a few adjustments to this right here specifically, this graphic, to make it look like it's further off in the distance. And, and in order to do that, we have to decrease the contrast, and we're also going to adjust the color so we can give it a more of a warm feel. And some of these uh, adjustments will allow you to do just that. So the first thing I think I'll do is we'll go to a photo filter. All right, and when it comes to working with these adjustments, you can see it adds a new sort of layer right here. If you want it to only apply to this a, a specific layer, you click this icon right there. All right, so now that will only apply to this layer. So now we can increase this slider and by default, it's on a warming filter. I, I kind of like it right around there. You don't want to go too much because it comes way too much saturated, but right around there, I think looks fine. I think we'll also add levels. All right, so again, make it only apply to that. And we'll take down um, the middle slider to the left, right around there. I think that looks fine. And then also, I'm going to add a new layer. So Control Shift N will give us a new layer. And I'm going to use the eyedropper tool um, just to get kind of like in this area. And I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer. So kind of uh, in an orange, but do, you don't want to saturate it too much. Just right around there, which is FFD, FAD for the color code. And I'm going to use uh, the paint bucket tool to just basically completely fill that layer with this color. And then I'm going to take down the opacity. All right, so if I hide this layer, we can see the effect. It's, it's really just pushing it back quite a bit. It's just uh, making it with less contrast. So you can kind of even barely see it. That's what I like. So I'm going to take all those, all four of those. And I'm going to be destructive about this and hit Control E. So that will merge them all into one layer. Then I'm going to take the rectangular marquee tool and just take the sky portion, hit Control T for transform and scale this up. Um, I probably shouldn't have included that initial layer. So I'm going to create a new layer with that same color and just um, put it in the back. So I, I put this new layer underneath here with this color as a fill. We can't see it yet, um, but what I want to do is I want to fade off the sky in the background. So we're going to take the eraser tool with a large feathered brush. So just take the hardness down to zero and the size up to around 900. And then we are going to erase the top part of this image, the, the, this image right here. 
so it kind of fades off uh, into a transparent area. That's what I want. Okay. Alex, what's up? Pull portfolio not ready yet. Next time. Awesome, man. Well, you're going to have to remind me of that <laughs> for the next review, which should be probably next Friday. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. That is a, a, that definitely helps the margarita fund for night because uh, those of you who know already, I, I do drink a couple margaritas like a girl um, uh, every Friday night. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Um, so let's continue on. So now we've created that separation between this, uh, this distant far off landscape and this foreground element right here. Um, we can make some adjustments with this one probably as well. So if I, uh, maybe the warming filter, uh, I, I did not hit the right run. Sorry about that. The warming, the photo filter. There we go. So if we, we, we drag this up just a bit, there we go. I think that's fine. So if I hide, well, make sure it's applying only to that layer. So you can see what this does. I actually kind of like it, push it way up like to 91%. Now it looks like it's a, it's a closer, maybe like a, a mountain part or a plateau or something. And then you have this distant area from here. Um, so then we have our rocks, which the rocks, I think the only thing I'm going to do there is just go to image, uh, brightness and contrast. Elements that are closer to you, like in the perspective um, of like a photo, have more contrast and they're, they tend to be darker. So I'm fine with something right around here. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, uh, now what we'll do is get rid of our adjustments panel, put this stuff over here, get rid of the properties panel. And now at this point, what I'll do, actually, you know what? Let me bring back my adjustments and we're going to select the rock photo and let's do, I want to see what adding the photo filter on that will do. So we'll make it apply only to that by clicking this icon and then there, it kind of gives everything an overall sort of, um, warmth fill. I like that a little bit better. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to take that, those two, just the rock in the photo filter and hit control E that's going to merge them. You would want to save this uh, so you're not being so destructive about it. Um, I'm going to take these two right here and control E. All right, there we go. So we're good so far. Now we're going to have our final element here in Photoshop and that will be, uh, where am I at? Our champagne bottle. All right. So I'm going to hold shift and scale that up. Um, and I'm going to do it where it where, one second. I'm looking off something in the distance. Okay. I'm going to do it. Uh, probably at a size that's right around here. Just eyeball it. Then we're going to place it right click and rasterize the layer. And then we're going to use our quick selection tool. No, no, we're not the magic wand tool. And then just make sure your tolerance 32 anti-alias and contiguous is on and we'll select the white and just hit delete. And we're also going to get rid of this wine glass right there. All right. And then we're going to select, uh, we're on our, our champagne bottle and I don't want to show the whole bottle, uh, when it comes up in the animation for the parallax effect. So what I'll do is take the eraser tool and get rid of the bottom. I'm just hitting it a couple times and then we're going to come down and maybe around 400 for the size. I think that might be okay. Kind of just get rid of the center while we still maintain the edges kind of like right around there. Um, I think it needs maybe a little bit more contrast. So I'll just bake it in by going to image adjustments, brightness and contrast, take the brightness down, the contrast up just a bit. And I like it. So this is now ready to go and all our assets are ready to be exported. All right. Oh, I don't even know where my background music is. Somebody mentioned it's too high. Maybe I should just, uh, stop it altogether. One moment. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I uh, did it, did it turn off? 
confirm that for me in the uh, the YouTube uh, comments here. Let me know if that music did indeed just shut off. Okay, so now this is all ready to go and we need to export these. So what we'll do, we'll start off um, with the, the closest element first, being the wine glass. So to do this, I'll hit Control A and then Control C to copy it. We'll go to File New. This is my my old school way. You know, there's probably a better way to do this these days. Like, can you right click and just export? Quick export as PNG. That should work. Uh, get out of there. Um, and what that will be, let's see. We're going to just save it in, somewhere in a folder. Hopefully, it's a 24-bit PNG that it exports. I'm going to save it in a folder called Post. And I'm just going to call it Wine. All right. And just to check to make sure it's the right type of PNG that it exported, we're going to go to Adobe XD. And we're going, this is the document that we set up earlier. And what we'll do is go back to our post. This is the wine bottle. Oh, darn. Unfortunately, it exported a, a larger one than I. And just to make sure that this is transparent, I'm going to change temporarily the background. There, perfect. All right, good. So we have this in here. That's fine. The size, I'm not going to adjust. I think it'll be fine right there. And then let's do our next one. So we'll do all of these. Um, I think I'm just going to right, just take all three, right click and quick export as PNG. And then just uh, select that. And there we go. So now we have all of them as PNGs. Okay. So now we can get, dude, get over there. There we go. <laughs> it won't let me drag it to the other monitor. So now uh, we can go back to XD and start piecing together the uh, the layout here. So uh, we're going to start off with the, the, the object that's in the furthest distance. Really, we didn't need the bottom part of that, just just from here, uh, but no big deal. So we're gonna scale it up so it matches where it needs to be. All right, and then we're gonna take our canola fields, as they're called. We're just scaling these, holding shift, right-clicking, kind of just placing them randomly for now. Get our rocks in here. Shift and Alt. Right around there. We want these have to be to be at the very bottom, by the way. And you can position these around as you want to. See how cool that is? All right. Initially, we're not going to see this wine bottle, though, uh, or this champagne glass. Uh, we're going to add that in a different proto or different uh, canvas. So initially what I'll do is simply take the opacity on that and just go all the way down so we don't see it. Now I did have uh, a little bit of other design um, added to this on top. So to frame things a little bit, I, I took the rectangle tool and just coming in right around here, left clicking and dragging, we're gonna create just a box over everything and we will get rid of the fill and we'll make the border, let's move that, white. Right around there. So of course this kind of fades off into the Mac. Oh, and also we want to get this uh, a certain color for the background. So I'm going to eye drop the color code here, right there. And that is FFDFAD. And I'm going to make that the background color of the canvas. There we go. That's, that's better. So now it kind of just fades off um, in the sky or whatever. So make sure that this has a, a good amount of even white, uh, white space or, or padding as it is from this outside container right there. Um, also, oh, yeah, I forgot something. We're not just done yet. We have to do one more thing. We're gonna create a new layer at the top, Control-Shift-N, hit Enter. And we are going to use the brush tool to create clouds. So you're going to need to go to Google and type in Photoshop 
cloud texture or cloud brushes. And you're gonna have to figure out how to add those into Photoshop. It's real easy. Once you download them, you just double click and import those into Photoshop. Um, so you may wanna pause um, so you can do that. Um, there's so many different ones out there that works. Um, this one works for me. Um, and so I'm going to add clouds. You don't have to do this, by the way. I'm just decided to add a, a, a sort of like an interesting effect. So I'm gonna add clouds right here. Make sure you have white for your foreground. Um, I'm just gonna click once actually. So now we kind of have like these clouds right here and I'm gonna make sure they're on separate layers. So I'll just copy this top one. I'll just select it with the um, rectangular selection tool, control C, delete, and then control V and puts on its own layer. So now we'll take both of those, right click, quick export as PNG and select folder and our clouds are ready to go. So now we have our two cloud graphics that I'm going to drag over right here. So now we got clouds. Where's the other cloud? Oh no, let me delete that. Um, was it layer one? No, it wasn't. Here's cloud, here's the first cloud. Okay, it's kind of a big cloud. And I'm gonna position this like right here, maybe up higher. And then also the other cloud. Yeah, maybe something like that. Put it wherever you want. You can even put it off to the side if you want. All right, cool. So now we're just gonna have two more elements. We're gonna have a text-based element where it says I uh, like Epic Wine right here. And then also a little scroll icon. And we're gonna design both of these, of course, in uh, XD. So I'm gonna save this, by the way. Um, we'll just call this um, XD Wine or something. Save it as a cloud document. Yeah, this will be made available on YouTube later on. So YouTube always makes it available like an hour or two after the live stream is ended. You can watch the whole thing. So now we're gonna take our type tool and I'm just going to click in the middle, hold Alt to uh, hold out something like right around here. We'll also center the text. I'm just gonna type in Epic Wine. And I don't know, I think we'll just do Monster Ad again, <laughs> as always. And then we'll get a color here. Let's move this out of the way. And, oh, there's that big cloud graphic. Let's delete that. So we'll select our text again. Um, we're gonna eye drop the background it's on and then make it darker. So it's in the same hue, but we're just changing the uh, the brightness and contrast. We're gonna increase the size. Let's make this light, I think, and then take the uh, letter, the line height. And I, uh, Yeah, right around there is fine. And to make it more interesting, we could take the wine and like maybe put it in between the two cloud layers. Yeah, like that, create depth in a certain sense. And then we're gonna create our little mouse scroll wheel and that'll be the last part. And then we'll just work solely on the prototyping. All right, so I think now is gonna be a great time to mention because it's been just about 30 minutes. Um, the sponsor who makes all of this possible, which is Skillshare. So Skillshare.com is an online learning platform uh, that has thousands of classes in uh, a lot of different areas, including UI, UX design, photography, illustration, graphic design. I did just work within Photoshop and I guarantee you they have tons of Photoshop courses. So if you're, you're new to Photoshop and that was a little bit in, uh, kind of intensive, there's a ton of beginner Photoshop courses and also Adobe XD courses as well, which we're also working in. So definitely check it out. You can get two months free using my link that's over here and the, the very first link in the top description of YouTube, two months free, why not do it? All right, so let's move that off and get you guys back here. All right. And Jim, to answer your question, <laughs> uh, Jim, to, to answer your question, I, I do have um, tutorials on YouTube where I take a design, you know, that's in like an app or whatever, 
uh, an app design or a web design and making an HTML and CSS. I do have some older courses on my site, CourseCetra.com and my Udemy, Udemy channel, but there's going to be new ones coming up very shortly. And this is Kyle Hovance, my, um, I, I'm not even going to say uh, what I was about to say. Uh, my bud from uh, that I went to high school with for my two Apple drink, Applebee's. You know what? It's not Applebee's these days. The kids, they just, they want to go to the lube, Quaker Steak and Lube. So I get my, my margaritas for there. All right. <laughs> Kyle Hovance loves Donald Trump too, by the way. All right. Um, and let's get started here. So let's put a rectangle right here. And we're going to do that scroll wheel icon. So let's get rid of the fill and put, make it white and then increase the size and bring these in. So we have our little mouse scroll wheel container thing here. Make sure that's centered. It's a little bit tall and we're going to come, I think I'm going to put it, where am I going to put it? Um, yeah, right there is pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna rep, we're gonna replicate or duplicate this layer. Control D, Shift and Alt scale in, fill it, and put it right around there. And there we go. These live sessions are made available automatically by YouTube about an hour or two after the live stream is available. And there we go. So um, this is the very first screen that we have and the design's essentially done at this point now it's a matter of um, working within the prototyping tab and uh, going back and forth and adjusting the design here in the design tab um, so now what we will do is we're going to ask, ask ourselves uh, what is the first part of the animation that we want to occur here um, so I guess maybe when this app loads up on a phone we'll make epic wine this type up here and this section um, it's kind of just kind of animate in, maybe fade in. So we'll have a position transition and also an opacity transition. So to do that in Adobe XD, and by the way, let's look at our, um, our layers here. We do have our wine layer. Um, no, where's our, there's our wine layer. We do have that there. We, we want all the layers intact. So we're going to duplicate this art bar by selecting the name our bar, I can't even talk, control D. And what we do is we make our adjustments in, in the, the previous artboard. Um, so we're gonna push this up. It's gonna come from the heavens, if you will. And we're gonna take the opacity down. So we moved it up. So we're changing the position. And then we also reduce the opacity. Then we're gonna take these two and I think we'll up oh, one second. I just forgot something. Um, 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 um. We're going to take these two, which is, I, I should be renaming my layers. Um, I have a bad habit of not doing that. We want these to kind of come from underneath or behind the rocks. So the rock layer is named what? Photo filter two. It's just now, if we go to rename a layer when we already have an artboard, that's not ideal. What we should do, I'm going to back up. What we should do, I should be, I should be better at this. I, uh, we're gonna say, I'm gonna, we're gonna rename our layers. I uh, mouse wheel inner. This is gonna be mouse wheel outer. We should just call it inny and outy, right? Um, and then this, what is this layer? This is cloud. We'll call this cloud one. Epic wine. This is gonna be cloud two. This rectangle is, we'll call this frame. Wine, this is gonna be rocks. This will be uh, mid ground. And then this will be uh, background. Damn it, Gary. There we go. Awesome. So now we have all of our, name, our layers named up appropriately. And if we go back in here, we want these two elements right here. We want those to show up behind the rocks. So right there. So now if we drag this down, oops, 
if we select both of, both of these and use our down keyboard arrow, it'll show up behind the rocks. So now let's go ahead, finally, we'll call this, um, I don't know, screen one. We'll duplicate it, control D. Now we move this one up. This is where it's gonna animate from and take the opacity down. Where's my opacity? Just bring it all the way to zero. And we're gonna take the inner and outer mouse wheel maybe right there and then also take the opacity down. So that's all we have to do outside of clicking on a prototype tab, clicking right here on screen one, and then just dragging this little arrow to the next prototype. And then we click on this and we change a few of the properties. So trigger, the trigger is going to be a time trigger and the delay is going to be zero seconds. So it's going to start immediately when we start this prototype on the play tab. And then the action type will be auto animate. So it's gonna automatically animate the different uh, position and opacity and the, the, the physical changes that we made um, to the individual layers from this to that screen right here. So we also have easing types. So ease out, um, ease in, ease in out, snap, wind up and bounce. You can experiment with those. It really changes the behavior of the animation um, and then for duration, this is going to be the, the length of the animation duration. 0.3 seconds would be pretty fast, so we'll just say one second. Now, let's go ahead and hit play at this point in time. Where are you at? I just hit play, and the, the damn thing's not showing up. All right, time to look on my... Oh, there it is. It's on my other monitor. Okay, so let's click play, and there we go. So I'm just clicking play several times, um, but it's, it doesn't actually loop. So I think that's fine. Maybe we'll make that uh, two seconds because it's kind of fast. I want it to be two seconds. So we click play. Damn thing showing up on my other monitor once again. Click play. There we go. So now at this point, I want this little mouse icon to animate. Again, we haven't got to the parallax stuff yet, but we will. Um, so what we'll do is take this, screen two, duplicate it. And now we want this little thing right here to animate, right? Um, this side, uh, the, the mouse wheel. So to do that, we will click on here and we'll get our mouse will enter and just move it down with our keyboard down arrow key so that's the only thing that has changed between these two artboards all right so we can go back to prototype and we'll drag this to there click on it and we're going to make this based on um, a time animation it's going to auto animate and let's see here. You could ch change the uh, the ease, probably to ease in out for one second. All right. And then we click on this one and we drag it back to this one. So we click on this, and it's gonna have the same settings as before but it, that's what's going to allow it to go up and down. It's going to transition between these two artboards. So let's click play. And there it goes. Look at that. So that's a signifier that, hey, you should scroll down, except Adobe XD doesn't have scrolling, right? So um, scroll activated animations at least. So we're going to make this a click trigger to, um, to simulate the scrolling parallax behavior. Awesome. So let's go ahead and save now. We'll go back to our design tab and we're going to duplicate, replicate this one. Let's call this uh, screen three. All right. Okay. So now we have to ask ourselves what will happen when um, we want to simulate this parallax effect or whatever. Well, Epic Wine, when somebody scrolls down, let's show the wine bottle, or the champagne bottle, or whatever it is. So, um, Let's go ahead and 
one thing we have to ask ourselves, what, what, what do we want to happen with the this little uh, screw wheel icon? We can just fade it out. Um, I think we'll fade it out because uh, you don't want too much animation uh, because uh, it, it could slow things down, especially on a performance on a, like a, a phone or a device like a phone. So we'll just fade it out. Um, so we'll select here these two and just take the opacity down. Let's take our epic wine type and we'll move this. Um, I think we will move it up, back up, and then also take the opacity down. All right. Then this is where the parallax stuff comes into play. It's very exciting stuff. Let's take the cloud up here. We'll just move it up just a tad bit. Maybe move this one down just a tad bit. And this back scenery, let's, where is it? What's it called? Background right here. We're going to move this down. And wherever you move, it's probably just easier to use your keyboard down arrow. So we're going to move this down. And I would say maybe right around there. We're going to take the canola midground fields or whatever and move that maybe just to right there. Um, I think we're going to move both of these actually down further. So we're going to take both layers right there. All right. And then we're going to show our wine glass. So we're going to take the opacity up. And I think uh, maybe we'll scale that down just a bit. Shift and Alt. right there notice it's behind this front cloud which gives a cool effect so now what we'll do is um let's see here um we have to worry i want this to kind of come up and from behind the rocks so we have to reposition this and scale it down again so if i take my wine it's 195 by uh, 512. So 195 is the only one you have to remember. So the wine needs to be adjusted to 195 over here. And we're going to, let's see here. I'm going to see what the position is. The position is 53 by 81. So we need to change this X and Y again. 53 by 81. Right. Okay. And we're just simply just going to drag it down. We can't see it right now, but that's maybe where it'll go. So I know we did a lot of work there, um, but let's hit play. Oh, and before we can do this, we have to click our, we have to take our, let's see, our mouse outer and make a click event. So we're going to drag it to this artboard. It's going to be a tap trigger and it's an auto animate. And we have to ask ourselves, you know, how long do we want that animation to take place? Let's just leave it as ease in out for one second. And we're going to do the same thing with this one over here as well. So let's hit, uh, let's make sure it starts on our screen one, hit play. Again, have to drag, drag it back over here, hit play. All right, so we have our animation taking effect over here. Now we click it. Oh, look at that. I actually want this to be a little bit longer. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to have to readjust these real quickly. So this one's going to be two seconds, as will this one. So just two seconds, enter. Hits it, play again. Click it. Look at that. All right, so let's have more fun with it. Let's say we're gonna have, um, you know, we're using GSAP, your GreenSock animation plugin. It's very easy to add multi-step animation. So let's um, duplicate this and let's make it kind of uh, really zoom up on the wine bottle and then really do more parallax effects. So we're gonna take this thing and just get it completely at the bottom or move it to the bottom rather. And we we'll take our mid ground and background and we'll push it down all the way to the bottom. And maybe we'll move the mid ground up. No, 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 the background rather. 
And then we're gonna take our wine glass and we will, let's go back to our design tab so we can um, scale it up. I think we'll go position it Um, ah, what am I doing? Like right there. <laughs> All right, so we'll go back to our prototype tab and we, we will drag this over. This is gonna be a time animation with no um, delay and we'll just leave it all at default settings. So now, Oh, did that go outside of this? Where's the rocks? We want this to be kept inside here. Um, yeah, we'll just leave that right there. Okay, so now let's hit uh, play. Click it. Oh, look, look at that. Let's uh, watch that again. You know what, the fact that this is it keeps on adjusting this artboard. I'm gonna to try to get this. Every time I drag it over to this monitor, it's just making it worse and worse. I wonder if I can scale it down. Let's hit play again. Let's watch that again. Maybe this one should be faster. So we'll just make this one one second. Hit play. Uh, let's bring it over. We'll hit play again. Wait, it started it from the wrong. Damn. There we go. And we'll have one more animation taking place, which will be this one. So we're replicating that. Control D. And then finally, we're going to we're going to scale this, or not scale it, but move it up. And it doesn't look like it's in the center. I'm just gonna push that over, nudge it a little bit. And we'll keep this part intact. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to make a, a change to the, the clouds as well. So on this one, when we zoom up, I think we're just gonna push that cloud up and then this one, move it down and then just move the opacity down. Um, this thing, same thing. We're, we're gonna keep the opacity out here. There we go. Um, then, as we scale up, we're gonna bring back our, our graphics over here. So um, we get our, let's see here. Where's our background? There we go. We're gonna push that up, kind of back to like kind of where it was before. And then we're also gonna get our mid ground, taking our up keyboard arrow, and then our rocks. So we're kind of going back to the original starting point here. And actually, I might wanna bring this down just a bit. Mid-ground. And then background. Okay. So the final thing we'll do is we're gonna have a type layer which needs to be added to this one after we add it here. And I'm just going to uh, put this right around here. It's gonna be left aligned, make it white, left align it, made in wine country, <laughs> okay. And we'll make this white. Um, we're gonna scale it down and we are going to make it bold. Scale it down just a tad bit more so we can get that Y in there. Something like right there. Contrast is a little bit off back here, but that's okay. And there we go. So now we take this, we copy it. Oh, we want it to show up underneath the rock layer which is um, right there. So we just put it underneath and then we, so we copy this, we go to this artboard or the screen, 
We paste it in and we are going to push it down right around there and take the opacity down to zero. And that should be it. So let's save, click on our prototype, push this over here. That's gonna be another time trigger. We'll make this one maybe two seconds. 2S, there we go. And we choose our very first screen and hit play. Let's drag this back. And let's hit play again. So that's the first screen here. It's gonna animate this. We click it and here we go. Look at that. I kind of want this to change though. I think this, um, this type layer that we have over here made in wine country. Oh, the rocks, it needs to come out. It needs to be positioned underneath that. And we're also going to um, push it down. So I just, I, I pushed it down more because so, I wanted that animation to, to be a little bit better. So we'll save this, we'll hit play. Once again, bring back, hit play again. Here we go. Click it. And there we go. Very, very cool stuff. Um, let me do this so we can see it on a, on a better context. I'm going to hit play. We'll watch it a final time here. All right, so we have our little animation taking place. We're pretending we're scrolling here. And there we go. Oh, this uh, little thing was supposed to not be behind it. Oh, that's uh, no big deal. This side, uh, this frame, I intended for it to be on top of the rocks, but that's not a big deal. It still works this way. All right. Awesome stuff. Okay. So, uh, what is it? 51 minutes already. All right. So I will, uh, do, uh, by the way, this XD prototype is, um, available, um, in the YouTube description, the other one that I did before I, I did this. So if you guys want to check it out, you guys can, um, you know, do that if you wish. So I'll save this. Uh, this can't be exported in code, no. You would have to do this by hand um, and you would, uh, like I said at the beginning of the stream, you would need to use something like uh, GSAP or AnimeJS. Um, GSAP's more robust is GreenSock animation platforms, JavaScript animation library. Um, and you would also use it if you wanted it for parallax and scrolling in conjunction with something like scroll magic, which is uh, a JavaScript scrolling library. And the two work very well together where um, you would just have to code it in HTML, CSS and use that, those um, JavaScript libraries in order to, to realize this on a phone or in a browser. Um, yeah, so there are other prototype tools that you can use as well. Some of them will export code. Um, so, sometimes things that export code, you know, you, you, I'm a little bit skeptical, skeptical of. Um, I think they're probably getting better nowadays, but back in the day, man, yeah, I, like the old school um, Dreamweaver, the code exporter, front page had a code exporting, I believe. Um, you, you got to be wary of that stuff, but, um, but anyhow, it's also nice to be able to know how to do it by hand as well. Um, so let's see here. Let me check out. I have a little bit of time left. Um, seven minutes. I will do a design review for anybody who wants to send in a super chat, which is this thing. So you click on this super chat, mention your discord username, go to discord. The links in the YouTube description, click on, um, the, review submissions here and submit your design link. Like it could be a UI um, design portfolio. It could be some web project that you recently did. Um, it could be a logo design and I will review it real quickly. And that's what I usually do on my live streams. I, um, I go back and forth between these project based live streams every Friday and design reviews where people submit their designs and I will review them live on air. Um, otherwise, if we don't get any of that, then uh, for the next few minutes, I'll answer any questions as, as best I can in the YouTube live chat here. But hopefully you guys uh, like that effect. It's very cool. I love Adobe XD um, very much. Very cool stuff. 
And um, I'm going to be doing a review of uh, a product coming out soon that works in conjunction with Adobe XD, among other things. I believe Sketch, uh, maybe even Photoshop, and that's called Famous Studio. And that will export, help you export your code um, and kind of make you a, I think, a, a PWA, Progressive Web App even, um, a mobile app from your Adobe XD and, and your other software's artboards. Um, and it's very cool. Um, uh, it's going to have a lot of interesting features. Um, and so you'll be able to go from design to an app without code, in a sense. Um, and again, it's going to be uh, it's sort of interesting. I, I mean, it, it, obviously, it's not going to work well for large, very complex apps. It's going to be meant more for simple apps. Yeah, Jim, I've, that's a possibility. Um, I possibly might do that, actually. I don't know. We'll see. Um, because like I would use GSAP and Scroll Magic. I do already have GSAP and Scroll Magic um, tutorials on, on my site. So if you watch those, you would have the knowledge already to be able to, to pull this off, but I still might do it. <clears throat> so um, let's see, how much would I charge a client for that work? Well, if it was just this little brief bit right here, um, and that's all they wanted is is just like a like kind of like a splash screen sort of animation that occurs on scroll and it's just a prototype and no code personally you know let's see how long did that take me to make yesterday when i conceived of the idea it wasn't any longer than like two hours i would imagine um so me personally i don't know i might charge something for something like that like four or five hundred bucks or something but i don't do client work anymore Um, do I, uh, I'm a full stack dev, work with a lot of Angular, but suck at coming up with good looking sites and designs from scratch. Any tips on the path to take to get more into design? So of course, watch a lot of my design um, videos that I have on this channel. I just did a UI design course for beginners um, at the beginning of the year, uh, which is free and it's on the channel. So check that out. It's a UI design like crash course into fundamentals. So understand the fundamentals like white space, uh, understanding how to utilize contrast, um, scale, type, all that stuff, the very basics. And then once you understand those, which doesn't take a long time to understand those, you have to work at implementing them. Uh, and, and you have to do that for, through, the only way you can really get better at that is just through repetition. It's a lot of practice and a lot of work to help develop the eye. And you, there's some, some tricks that you can use to help you with that, for instance, I, I advocate, and I put out a video about this, um, by imitating other work. Just the, the process of physically sitting there, recreating a really nice UI design, perhaps that are on, uh, maybe the ones that are voted and rated the highest on sites like dribble.com or something. I know it's it's a fallacy to say that just because something's popular doesn't mean it's good, uh, but chances are it's going to be a lot better and it has, it, it's going to have a lot of the fundamentals nailed down already. So if you take the, if you, you, you find a design that you think really looks awesome and perhaps other people do as well, and you'd like to be able to create that design, that those types of designs, you start off by recreating that design from scratch in your chosen uh, UI design tool, like uh, Adobe XD or Sketch or Figma or whatever, and literally sit there as a practice routine you don't don't say that you created it it's something that you just delete afterwards sit there and recreate the design that will help subconsciously it, it helps develop i i don't know what the, the technical termini terminology is for what happens in the brain but it helps develop muscle memory as it pertains to creating design and then from there you will eventually develop your own style so that's what i that's what i advocate doing if you want to try to get good at something it's like for for instance, guitar. I have a bunch of guitars. I've been really getting back into guitar. I used to play a lot when I was younger. And I want to do a lot of crazy, fast, shreddy stuff like, you know, Ingve Malmsteen, Steve Vai stuff. And I want to be able to eventually write that type of music myself. Uh, really impressive guitar virt virtuoso type stuff. But I know I'm not just going to be able to go in there uh, with a guitar and start recording that type of stuff without really 
understanding the techniques involved and and having the muscle memory in my fingers. So I'm I'm sitting there and I'm just learning other people's songs right now and their pieces. And it, it takes a long time. It's not overnight. You have to have you have to approach it from a perspective that you're going to do this uh, every day for months at least. I uh, in in usually a couple of years like with with guitar to take some of the best guitarists like Steve Vai it took him he said two years to develop his picking technique, two years of working every day for multiple hours. Um, so same thing with design. You know you you have to work as much as possible. Yeah, when you have off time, maybe if you have a regular job, I uh, you, you really need to like I said do those practice routines and. Um, once you how you start to be pretty decent, you can start getting clients and stuff like that. All right, next question. Uh, are am I also do I do well, I also do 3D stuff? I did just touch on 3JS recently, and I'm going to do more specifically on particles uh, coming up shortly. Um, but usually not too much 3D stuff. Back in the day, like in 2014, I do have a number of Blender tutorials um, on my channel. You can check that out on the channel search. Um, where I where can I find the about me about slash about us text content that can lead to conversions? No, not really sure. I uh, I would suggest taking I uh, reading up as much as possible about ad copy and marketing. Uh, so ad copy is a part of marketing, of course, but learning how to write good ad copy is huge. It's vital. It's just as important as nailing down the design when it comes to conversions. Um, any new videos about UI to front end? Um, well, I'm thinking about doing a more robust premium course that I might release on Udemy and Skillshare. Um, Super Chat's not available. Uh, sometimes I guess you could PayPal me, but it's getting too late now. It's already uh, an hour plus. Um, all right. I think this is where we're going to conclude. We're an hour and two minutes in. Uh, I, hopefully you guys like that. If you like that, uh, you know, the, the way I teach or whatever, and you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. Click the bell notification icon so you get notified every uh, video that I upload. And I do this every Friday, all right? So next Friday, um, it might be taking this design and making it work, uh, like on a phone or a browser, but it might not be. I, I'm not sure yet. It depends on how much work will be involved in that. Um, either way, you could still figure out how to do it by looking at my GSAP and the uh, Scroll Magic tutorials that I have already on doing something very similar um, like this. So yeah. Discord as well. Check out the Discord server. Um, I'm always in there. We have a bunch of people. I think we're almost at 5,000 people have entered the server. They're not currently all here, but uh, a lot of people, 317 over here. Just come by, chat. I'm always there, like I said. And also, one final mention to the sponsor that makes all of this possible, which is Skillshare.com. They are an online learning platform. I, that have a bunch of classes, like 25,000 plus, in UI, UX design, also in web development, a lot of JavaScript, illustration, graphic design, Photoshop, Adobe XD, UI, UX, like I said, name it. Two free months, if you click on the description here in YouTube, it's this uh, right here as well, it's laid on, the, um, uh, on top of the video. And yeah, two free months where you can watch every single course um, touching on many of the subjects that I touch on regularly, especially in this uh, video tutorial as well. So definitely do that. All right, guys, thanks for joining up. Somebody asked, uh, I'll answer these final last three questions. What would you advise someone who wants to start as a freelance web developer or designer? That's a huge loaded question. Unfortunately, I don't think I can answer. I, I guess if I could give a single answer, learn. I mean, just go to Google, go to YouTube, go to Udemy, go to go to some of the, oh, get out of here. Go to some of the um, education platforms that do cost money, but not much, especially if you consider, uh, if you compare it to college. Um, you know, like Pluralsight.com, I, I have like 20 plus courses with them that I've created throughout the years. Um, 
I also LinkedIn Learning, which was formerly the uh, LinkedIn bought Lynda.com. Go there. Just learn as much as you can about the topic every day. When is the next negative space? It may be not this weekend. It, it, I only do this on Friday. So maybe next Friday. It might be then um, or but no, might be yet another follow along. So we'll see. All right, guys. I, I will see you guys later and subscribe up.